Good morning, you people, you. It's the day that we sit and do our thing. Today is 6-19-2016. What's up, guys? TruckDriver101.com. Let's talk about TruckDriver101.com real quick. We have a podcast. Yes, we do. You can get it on iTunes. We have a blog. Yes, we do. It's at HowToTruckDriver101.com. HowToTruckDriver101.com. Or just truckdriver101.com and it will actually pop up. Yes, it will, honey. We have a book that helps support the show. You can get on that at truckdriverbooks.com, truckdriverbook.com, or truckdriverbooks.com. And it will take you to our lovely, honey, lovely audio book for all you new truck drivers. Help you make that big money in trucking, baby. Get you that big money in trucking. (laughs) And let's get down to business here. So I am Big Ken, and this is what I am making. This is a podcast that I do. And I have been a trucker for a long time of a decade. Now we're going on 11 years, y'all. Whoever thought I'd be in this shit that long, I didn't think I'd be in this shit that long. (laughs) All right, guys. So let's break down this shit. Let's talk this shit. Let's make this shit. Oh 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 oh. oh. <laughs> ah, so if you're watching this either on YouTube or you're watching the podcast, we do appreciate ya. So let's get down to business. This one is called the delusion of control. So. Since I've been in the game, every once in a while, there's somebody who says these words, which I find really stupid if you listen to them. All trucking companies are the same. There are lots of guys who believe in this, and I want to explain why no trucking company is the same. Every trucking company you go to, there are always different amounts of freight that that company can get in that area. The problem with most drivers is they don't understand the business aspect of the trucking company. They think that freight just exists and they just get it and it's just that magic shit. It's not. Every company has a, a, a area that they dominate. For instance, when I started in trucking in Michigan, Michigan was a gold mine back in the day for a company called Warner Enterprises that I used to work for. And back then, when I went to Warner as a rookie, they immediately slapped me on a dedicated account. At This is when they was telling people, oh, you got to work six months over the road. You got to do a six months over the road. Right. But guess what? I didn't do that because they didn't they didn't really need that. And then they got General Mills refrigerated. They couldn't keep nobody on that account because you had to stay out for two weeks. Me, I was like, all right, I'll give it a try. Why not? So I switched and I went to General Mills Refrigerated. When I went to General Mills Refrigerated, guys, the money was a rolling because nobody wanted this account. And I was rolling, you know, and it was good money. It got to so good when I became a trainer that if I wasn't making a thousand dollars, I was like, what the uck? <laughs> I was like, what the uck? What the uck happened? Why am I not making my twenty my 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 thousand dollar check? This is a little eight ninety five. What the uck? Then I looked that week nine hundred dollar check. What the uck? <laughs> what the uck uck? <laughs> right? And that's how it was. Then over time they lost the refrigerated account. Oh. When and literally on the account I went from making a thousand dollars a week as a trainer to making and i'm talking after taxes to making i mean because at one point i was making like thirteen hundred dollars a week <laughs> it was nice but and i was running hard because we only make a 33 cent do the math on that i was running hard um however the account slowed down and then it went away that's just the fucking truth it slowed down and then it went away um when that happened guys and the account went away the thing is, all that freight went away. So then they put us on General Mills Dry. General Mills Dry was nowhere near making any money. I went from eight to, well, like I started at a thousand. Right, well, when I started at sixes, as when I jumped on after a year experience, then I got my training and then I was doing a thousand a week. 
Then I went from a thousand to five hundred a week at training, and I was like, "Something's wrong with this picture, babe." <laughs> so I uh, definitely had to start changing shit up. Um, but the point of this is that they lost freight in that area, so my world changed. At the same time, we get, they have a military account, I believe, in uh, Iowa. They probably still have it. I don't know. But I talked to a driver there. He had been working on that account, <clears throat> excuse me, for 20 years, 20 years. He'd been working on that account. So after 20 years, he's still been making twelve hundred, thirteen hundred dollars a week after taxes because he's had a, a high rate, a high pay round. I mean, when they started the account, they were above 33 cent. So he was he was making he's been making great money for 20 years. Even, but even in that situation, he's why he back back then when I talked to him before he was about to retire, he his account had dwindled down to where he was only he was on, like only a, one of three drivers on that account. Okay, from at one point twenty drivers. The point I'm trying to make is that sales, the way trucking companies work, they work through sales and brokers. And if they have the broker, their brokerage, or they have the sales, in other words, they made a big sale that haul a lot of freight, they're going to make you money. That's how all trucking companies work. But if there is no sale, if they, the salesperson doesn't get a new company or the brokerage doesn't get a new bro, uh, company to broker for, your ass is out. That's where all our money comes from. That's how we make money in trucking. Okay. And I'm also making this for all these guys who had this dream of, of owning 50, 60, 70 trucks. When you own a truck and you want a driver in it, you got to have a good pay package and you got to keep the freight moving. You need to hire a broker or get with a brokerage. Okay? That's how freight works. That's how trucking works. This, the truth is, guys, and here's a shocker. There's no such thing as a trucking business. Let me let me let that one. I'm actually going to talk about this again. There's no such thing as a trucking business that doesn't exist. We're in the warehousing business. That's our business. That's who we really work for. We work for warehouses or, or storage companies or whoever we're hauling freight. That's who we're working for. Right. But that's the warehousing business. That's the the um, the shipping, the shipping and warehousing. Right. That's where we that's what we do. Logistics. There is no trucking business. No, because the trucking gives the impression of permanence, right? Because you think they have to, you have to have these miles or you have to have this money or you have, they have to, have to, have to. No, you're not sunshine and water. You're not it. <laughs> okay. You ain't sunshine, baby, and you ain't water, honey. No, you're not. So what do I mean by that? For those who don't get what I'm saying, the yeah, sunshine is a need. It has to happen or the, earth, the planet dies, right? Water. If you don't drink water every three days, right? You going to die. That's a fact. Okay. So think about that. We're not a need. There are companies that have freight shipped from a train that comes off a boat and that might be distributed using trucks. Right. But for the most part, we're not in need. Does that make sense to you? Hopefully it does. And now what I mean by that is they could easily get vans to do it. They could figure out a different way to ship directly to customers. OK, so I'm not saying we're going away. Oh, no, no. But I am trying to get through to guys when they say all companies are the same. They're not because each company is different. Every company has an opportunity for you to work and make money and every company has an, a dead zone where it is no money being made. So if you are looking for a trucking job, whether you got experience or you don't got experience, I want you to take that little information that you're in the warehousing business and think of where the bomb warehouses are paying out the good money are and that's who you go work for. Start with the customer then start with the company because the customer dictates where your money's going to go. So if I went and I worked for General Mills Refrigerated, they were dictating how much money I had because they had a gang of freight. Why did they have a gang of freight? Because General Mills Refrigerated ships, the number one thing I was hauling all the time, yogurt. 
I was hauling shitloads and shitloads of yogurt all the fucking time. Why? Because name one place where you don't see yogurt or going off the shelf every 33 seconds. Just walk in a warehouse, walk in uh, not a warehouse, a grocery store and look and look at the yogurt aisle. It's either full or it's empty. It usually ain't no in between. And usually you don't see all the flavors. They're constantly getting replenished, constantly getting replenished. I would literally go to a General Mills refrigerated place over in, uh, I think it's Kalamazoo. I would drive from there down to Murfreesboro, Tennessee, deliver and pick up, turn around, drive from Murfreesboro, Tennessee, right over to Massachusetts, drive from Massachusetts down to Virginia, drive from Virginia back over to Murfreesboro. <laughs> And either I was going to a Walmart facility, I was going to a uh, Cisco where they distributed there. I was going to a uh, General Mills warehouse where they was just doing a trail like, OK, put this yogurt here and then we're going to take this yogurt. And that's what I did. Ninety percent of the stuff I hauled was refrigerated yogurt and treats like, you know, cakes and and cookies and stuff like that that were refrigerated that people would cook. That was literally it. So I didn't know anything about slow time in the trucking industry. I've talked about that before. I didn't know anything about that because everybody buys yogurt all year long. The shit costs a dollar. <laughs> yes, it costs a dollar. You know what I mean? And when I try to explain to guys, start with your customer first, start with your product. When you choose in a company, I try to explain it to you this way because that's what dictates what you make. Not this bullshit. All oh, companies are all the same. No, they're not. They're only the same when the freight is there. If the freight's not there, you're not going to make any fucking money. You know, a perfect example, a lot of guys get into lease purchase programs because they think all lease purchase programs are the same. They're not. I see guys going programs where they're like, oh, okay, every mile is guaranteed a hundred and eight a dollar eight, excuse me. A dollar oh eight. I was reading one company. I think it's Trans Am. They guarantee you a dollar eight. That ain't enough for bills. That ain't enough to barely pay for fucking fuel. That's fucked up. You don't want a dollar eight with fuel surcharge, maybe 20 cents. Fuck that. You need a variable cost because every time, let me tell you something. When a trucking company has brokers, this is how the freight is being shipped. Oh, man, we got this flow over here. This customer wants to pay extra money because they need it there right now. So we're going to send owner operator or lease contractor over there, at least purchase operator over there. He's going to pick that load up and then he's going to take that load over here. We going we, because they really need this load delivered. They paid us our agreed amount of $5 a mile or $3 a mile, right? Well, you don't get all that money, right? A percentage goes to the company. So it's, it might break down to you to $2 a mile or one or one fifty or something like that. Because you gotta remember, it's gotta go through the brokerage and all the other costs and fees and shit. Because they got they got you that we don't know about too, right? But I'm I'm using that as a, a number, right? Because it's not always that big. But they may haul that freight. So because of that, that urgency, you get money on that. But because you're hauling for a dollar guaranteed a fucking mile, that urgency money you don't get. You don't get shit. <laughs> fact i'm gonna go into that one a little more but you don't get shit you get that fucking funky dollar eight they guaranteed you oh it was heavy oh it cost a little more on gas tough shit bitch you get that dollar eight it's in your contract all right so know the business you're in start with the customer first you want to do a lease purchase start with the company then the customer those are the ways you do it here can talk about going over the road ken's always talking about dedicated over the road don't ever ever in your fucking life in as long as you live and you are allowed to listen to my beautiful baritone voice <laughs> as long as you live do not never ever 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 just do straight up over the road it will kill you one if it's busy and two it will dry up like a fucking desert in a minute because you're you're basically on the outward side of like it's it's almost like being in the economy so when the economy goes up your ass is busy. When the economy goes down, your ass is sitting. Don't do that. Dedicate it. Whether the economy was up when I was working for General Mills, refrigerated or down, everybody buying yogurt. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> you see what I'm saying, right? Everybody's buying yogurt. 
you just got to figure out if freight slows down at the refrigerated company you're at, where did freight go? What was I hauling before that I'm not hauling now? These are the questions you ask yourself when you're looking for a company and you're in a specific niche that made you money. Where did it go? Look at the company. Find the companies that have taken your place. Sometimes in General Mills Refrigerated's case, they broke up their dedicated refrigerated. They used to have, we were dedicated refrigerated. Stevens had some dedicated refrigerated part of it. And a lot of other companies, they broke it all up. So all of a sudden, everybody, every different company, different companies were hauled and refrigerated. So because of that, you know, we, we didn't have, they weren't doing the dedicated anymore. But they was, for some reason, doing dedicated dry. But it wasn't moving nearly as good because, one, the reality of the shelf life of yogurt to the shelf life of fucking cereal, right? You know, cereal can sit on the shelf for fucking months. And let's be honest, you go some weeks like when the kids ain't in school, cereal doesn't really sell all that well because the kids ain't eating cereal every day. Right. They get up and it's like, oh, we're going on vacation. You know, eat this food. You know, you're going out to eat things like that. However, during school time, cereal is being eaten every day. That's again, we're on an example. We're not saying that cereal just doesn't move. But I'm just saying, think about the difference in the movement of yogurt versus cereal as an example. But that's how the account seemed to run to me because it was like when it was summer, we were kind of busy. But when it was winter around Thanksgiving, we were moving. But again, you know, same thing with yogurt, but yogurt has a shorter shelf life. So as a result, I was always moving. Right. So hopefully that helps some people. But companies are not the same. Start. When you pick a company, start with the concept of what they haul, how much business they have, because regardless of whether you like it or not, the salespeople in the brokerage are the people dictating how much freight you're going to get. Okay. And when you decide to lease purchase, you know what? I'm going to go into that separately. So that'll be the next podcast. Truckdriver101.com.